I can. Hi, Sebastian. Ah, uh, uh, Rick Wizerman. We meet at last. We do. Thor from Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. That's right. I've been waiting a long time to finally interview you like I do to others for months. I'm excited. Yes. And ever since then, since I've been hearing your voices since Thor, I've been trying to search up all your voices. <laughs> and again, touch with you. And now here we are. Stan. Here we are. I have a lot of questions I wanted to ask you. I'm so, ready. Tell me, <clears throat> how does it feel about being a voice actor in animation? I think it's very exciting. In fact, I, sometimes I think it's more fun than doing commercial voiceover or promos or movie trailers, because then you're just saying, you know, uh, some words like a, you know, trying to sell something. But with animation or video games, you're really kind of telling a story. And I don't have to just sound like Rick. I can sound like Thor or the Hulk. You know, I can I can put on different voices and that is fun. It's like playing. Yeah. And speaking of that, how does it feel about playing Thor in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes? That was the most fun. I'll tell you why. Because before that, I had played the Hulk in a movie called Planet Hulk. And when I did that, I recorded it all by myself. There were no other actors in the room. It was just me. But when I got to do the Avengers, all of the other actors who play all of the Avengers were in the room at the same time. So there's Fred Tattashore as the Hulk. And there's all these other actors who I really liked in the same room. So that when I have to have an argument, when Thor has to have an argument with Hulk, I can look up and see Fred and we can play. So that's really fun when we're all in the room at the same time. Yeah, because I actually met Fred Tattashore a few months ago and interviewed him. Turns out he's a very awesome dude who just <laughs> likes to do a lot of voiceovers you know yeah like recently he's been in a lot of good movies like like who was in the in the movie injustice as the voice of captain autumn he even appears in uh the one you were in in the recent one batman the long halloween he mm. does solomon grandi while you played that got bodyguard how did yeah. it feel about being in that movie it's always fun the weird thing is is you know, you don't you don't always get to meet the other actors. You don't always know that that Fred's going to be in it or this actor is going to be in it. You only find out when it comes out. So, you know, it's usually exciting once you know that the movie's out. Now you can see all the people that you were in the movie with and they're usually friends. I see. So that what makes you so good at this. And <laughs> and tell me, I've been playing a lot of video games and um, and I played one. And its name is Duablo. How do you feel about playing the character Imperius in that movie, in that game? Yeah, Imperius is just kind of the worst of the bad guys. He's just he's just terrible and awful. And that's that's very fun to play. Because I don't know if you can tell Sebastian, but I'm not really a bad guy. I like to smile a lot. I like to have a good time. And Imperius does not. So sometimes it's fun to play something very different than yourself. And that is imperious for me. That's a lot of fun. Because you were all deeper than I thought. And I was mm -hmm. like, boy, that voice that I hear, it reminds me. Your voice me. sounds pretty deep too. Can, can You can make your voice go deeper though, right? Hmm. If I can, of course. After yeah. all, I do do a good stuff, you know? You like, do, I've heard you. I've listened to some of your interviews. See, I can make my voice go deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Yeah. So that's what it's, I do when I get to play Imperius. I get to just drop my voice and talk down deeper. It's fun. Now that, that's what I remembered. Uh-huh. And, and uh, by the way, speaking of your deep voice, I've heard you play both, both Thor and Absorbing Man in, <laughs> in Avengers Earth's Mightiest Hero. Who would you rather prefer? Thor or, or the villain itself? That's a good question. Well, I suppose if the villain got to be in more episodes, that might be fun to play. Because sometimes it's fun to play a villain. Like I said, because in real life, I'm not a villain. And sometimes it's fun to play something that you're not. On the other hand, Thor's in a lot of episodes. Thor, to me, 
in the Avengers, I always thought of him as sort of like a big boy scout. You know, like always wanting to do the right thing and trying to be very positive and uh, and he was very, very kind of boyish and energetic and excited about things, uh, especially in our sort of modern world. Uh, so that was fun, too. That's a tough choice. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to play both of them if I could. Yes, that is something I begin to learn from you, because after all, that it is what I've seen back in 2010 when I first saw you there, turned out you were quite perfect as that character. Oh, that I, that's very nice of you. What a nice that, thing to say. And that, since that, you actually been chosen to play him throughout history, you know? Like in 2019, when you appear in that video game, which of course the other actors returned to repraise their roles. That's such right. As Ritesh, or, am I correct? You are correct. That's right. I've gotten the chance to play Thor a number of times. In fact, I once got to play um, Surtur, who I think was one of the one of Thor's uh, one of the enemy. Thor villains. Yeah, his enemy. That's right. Uh, but I didn't get to play them at the same time. That would be tough. Like if you had to play both of them at the same time, that'd be very tricky. But I haven't had to do that. Yes, because you were such. You sound more like a deeper voice because uh -huh. your deeper voice as Surtur kind of remind me of Keith Silverstein. Oh, uh, really? Because of his because of his voice acting he does in Miraculous Ladybug as Hawk Moth, or mm. should I say Shadow Moth, making him more deeper than I thought. Yeah. But like, boy, Rick's voice sounded more like Keith's than I thought. <laughs> you know what? what? Some people have deep voice all the time like whenever they speak like just speaking to you now they got a real deep voice but some people don't and that when they get into the booth behind the microphone then they start adjusting their voices to make them sound deeper i think i'm somewhere in the middle i've got a pretty deep voice but i can make it deeper for different characters well well that's good and by the way you know what i oh you know what uh video what uh video games i also like to play tell me Batman Arkham City. Yeah, the Arkham series is great, isn't it? You played Clayface, am I correct? I, yeah, I did, I did. How do you like being that character, Clayface? I like playing Clayface, you know why? Because Clayface is an actor. That's what he is, and that's what I am. I'm an actor, I'm a stage actor. Uh, uh, I've done some television work, not a lot of movie work, but I've been on stage a lot. In fact, I was in a big Broadway show called The Lion King. And I played Scar in that, so he's a bad guy, but I also played good guys in that, like Timon and Pumbaa and Zazu. So I'm used to being an actor. Well, Clayface is an actor. So that's something I could relate to, like I understood his being an actor. And of course he's Clayface and he's really fun to play. Yeah, I noticed. By the way, I want to tell you this, but um, <clears throat> I have autism, by the way. Mm -hmm. and, um, some people just call me special because of the way I am. And for many years, I've been seeing a lot of TV shows that I thought to myself, one day I want to get myself into my own television show, just like the rest, until I discovered you guys and the rest of the others that I begin to learn the experiences from. It gave me the motivation into making my own show. And so that that way, when I do, I want to cast my own people into the show to make it look perfect. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's a great story. Yeah. That's and, really uh, terrific. I know quite a bit about autism. Uh, I have a son who has autism, so I understand it. Uh, and I uh, think about it a lot. And I have to say, Sebastian, I'm very proud of you for making this show and of following your dreams, I think is absolutely wonderful. Because all I know is that there is this, you know, who was the reason why I wanted to interview you and many others? Tell me. This one guy named Chris Mayek. He interviews a lot of voice actors for many months who mm. I've been trying to reach out to, including the, the most important voice actor I wanted to get in touch with, Kari Walgren. Kari, yeah, she's very, very talented. Yeah, I try. I sent her a friend request just so I can let her know about my interviews that I have done. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I've been trying to reach out to her, but it all ends in failure. Oh. So yeah, that's why I need every single voice actor's help to let them <laughs> know about my interviews so that she can be part of it. Just like my friend Chris Mayek did months ago since uh-huh. July. And I won't stop until I finally reach to her. <laughs> yeah. Well, and good so, for you. Good for you. And speaking of that, how does it feel going head to toe with Corey Walgren's Omora the Enchantress and <laughs> verities of stuff? She's she's a fantastic actress. And as a good actress she is, she's also a, a wonderful human being. And, you know, we were together in The Avengers. Yeah, she played opposite Thor. Um, Amora played, the Enchantress. Yeah, she played Thor's love interest in that, Jane Foster. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we had scenes together. And I think that was the first time we worked together is doing Avengers, even though we have worked together since. Yeah. I'm starting to notice because when I first saw you on there, you were all like, boy, that boy is sure talking to that girl. He did look <laughs> perfect, especially the his love interest, Jane Foster, you know, mm-hmm. which her normal voice is much perfect than I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought, man, he, he is one interesting dude when it comes to saving people. Yeah. That is Thor's will to protect yes. those that matter to him. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And by the way, thinking of that, <clears throat> I've seen you play play in that game called uh, Call of Duty, correct? That's right. Sure. You like being Call of Duty, by the way? You know, that's one of those games where I have provided my voice for the game, but I've never played the game. Like, I've never sat down and played the game. There's a lot of games that I have lent my voice to or was a voice actor in that i've never really played there's a a game couple games called xcom i've never played them but i'm in them um and and i have never played call of duty but i know it's very popular have you played it sebastian oh yes that my my uncle and i played it together well actually i've seen him play the game Uh and it turns out he is quite per- perfect to playing the game and i heard yeah. your voice in it yeah and i was like man he sure sounded like a cool guy when it comes to <laughs> being a soldier however yeah. am i correct yeah i i uh again i've never been a soldier in my life so when you get to do call of duty and be a voice in it you get to pretend most of voice acting is just pretending just playing pretend uh, and I've been playing pretend since I was a little kid, you know, with my friends. We go outside and play pretend. Maybe sometimes we play soldiers. And now I'm an adult and I get to play soldiers. I see. And by the way, there is a, a, other questions like, do you consider vo- voicing in a lot of movies, shows, and games? If yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I like all of them. I like all of them equally. And, you know, I get to record a lot of them at home. In fact, right over here off camera is my studio. It's a booth. And I get inside it and right from my own home, I get to record my work, which is nice because that means I don't have to be away from my family a lot. Like a lot of people in other jobs, they have to go away. And I I feel very fortunate that I don't have to go away. I could stay here and see my sons and my wife and play with my dog, uh, which is always good. And then once in a while, I have to go to a studio somewhere, drive somewhere. And that's nice, too, because I get to meet new people. I get to get out of the house a little bit and I get to play with some uh, some talented people, some talented voice people and directors. Yeah, especially to some voice cast directors like, uh, you know, of Mary Elizabeth McGillan. Sure. Yeah, Yeah. these these are all very important. I know, you know, um, Keith, right? You know, Keith Farley. Oh, yes, I remember him. And you know who else I rem- also remember? Huh? Keith Sarabaya. Wow, you know a bunch of people. Y- yes. You must know so many people. Yes. Your mind must be filled with all these names of all these voiceover actors and directors. Yeah, and yeah. that's why I can't give up until I reach out to any o- other actors, you know? And you know what else? Turns out my friend, Chris Mayek, just mentioned my name to two voice actors. DC Douglas and uh, Mike Winchert. 
Mm-hmm. Turns out they both were interested about, about, about my name. Really? Like, if I ever interview this Sebastian, I will want to know about who he really is and what are his true intentions. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. So maybe through other voice actors, you will meet even more voice actors. Yes. Including Kari Walgren, who I should <laughs> try to get in touch with. And speaking of that, you know, Chris Mayek, my friend, is interviewing two voice actors today. Who are they? Allison Peckard and a special guest who I hope to be Erica Herletzer or oh. Kate Hedgens. Because oh. if that happens, I'll be like, yes, I <laughs> knew it will be Erica Herletzer or Kate Hedgens. Because yes. um, you know what he actually told me? Tell me. He told me he's going to mention my name to everybody to let That's them wonderful. know. wonderful. To let them know about who I am and why I want to interview them because of the way I am. Well, he's a very helpful friend, isn't he? Yes, he yeah. really is. He knows how I feel and wanted to help me be recognized. How wonderful. Everybody. He's more than just a Facebook friend. He became my best friend in the internet. Aww. That's a great story. That's yeah. a great story. Because the first thing... The first day I talked to him is when he had that interview with Kari Walgren. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole reason why we became friends because of that. That's terrific. And yeah. And by the way, and speaking of that, that kind of reminds me, you ever been in, you ever been in a, uh, a stop motion comic show? Like, uh, Hmm. Like a Black Panther. Uh, I was in an episode of Black Panther. You were radioactive, uh, man, correct? That's right. I was radioactive, man. That's right. You like doing a British voice of that character? <laughs> yeah. I like doing d- different dialects, like uh, like I'm someone from uh, different countries. You know, I was in Resident Evil, and I played someone, uh, that, that video game, and I played someone who was from Russia. But I have to tell you that I, I always worry that my accent is not perfect. You know, like I might not really sound British. I sort of sound Brit-ish, you know, not not quite perfect. Like if someone was really from England and heard me pretend to be British, they'd go, that guy's not really British, you know, but uh, I do my best. I do my best. And it really is fun. Yeah. I yeah. think your British voice sounded perfect. Oh, thanks. Especially with other voice actors I interviewed with which turns out to be awesome with yours <laughs> and Corey Walgren's and others. Yeah. It sounds so perfect. Oh, thanks. That's a nice compliment. <laughs> it is what I do, you know, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. You've been in that video game called uh, Starcraft, the voice Starcraft, of Starcraft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You like playing that character, correct? I do. All those characters from those blizzard games, right? Uh, Diablo is a blizzard game. And StarCraft is a Blizzard game. I've been in a bunch of Blizzard games. That's the company who makes them. And all those characters are very uh, powerful, big, epic voices. And that's fun to do. Yeah, because your voices, that kind of makes me feel all, whoa, now that's <laughs> super cool to hear. That's cool, because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make people feel like, whoa, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So that's good to know it works. Of course, because that reminds me, you know, I'm actually making a project for, in, or should I say my own show for, for HBO Max one day when I, whenever I make it look real. Uh-huh. You know why I call it? What? I call it Legends of the Olympian Gods. Wow. It's based on Greek mythology story, and it's something they should have made all those years ago. Hmm. So are the characters like Zeus and... Yes, I chose myself to be Zeus. And Let's hear your Zeus. Can I hear it? What's it going to sound like? Do not tempt me this way. Wherever my father sent, I will find him. But, n- but I cannot. Not yet. Not as long as I unite my brothers and sisters together. And when I do, I'll march down to Olympus and unite them to... To destroy, defeat my father and end his reign for good. Wow! This is so you're gonna write the thing and you're gonna perform in it, both of yeah, those things. Because I actually chosen you to be part of it. Oh yeah, 
because you, I've chosen you to be the voice of Cronus. Oh, wow. Using hey, your- Tell me about your, Cronus. Cronus is like the father of Zeus, the actual main, the main antagonist, who's the the son of Oronos, the the this being created by the nebula, huh. watches over the universe. He is like Sebastian. Does that mean that you and I get to have a scene together? Yep, you'll be hey, like, hey, that's cool, father. Whatever you're doing, I can't allow you to leave here alive, and you will use your deep voice to make it sound like a villainous voice. All right, what, what will I say? What will what will Cronus like, say? Son, I shall have shall have my revenge. All right, let me try. Will... Let me try. Wait, listen. Son, I will have my revenge. Yes. Like that? Now now that's super perfect. Hey. Now, <laughs> that's something I wanted to see for my own show whenever I finally make it real. Oh, and I great. told I told this to other people like Rachel Kempsey, Michael Yorchak, and others. And they were like, wow. That's a super project that you're actually going to make. I hope it becomes real and I hope we get casted into it. And I said, <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Make it yeah. look as perfect by getting yeah. all of you in there. Uh, <laughs> How fun. Yeah, that would be neat. That would yes. be a good project. That is a pretty neat no project I'll make because I'll make it more anime stylized mm. to make it look like a perfect way to make things through. And I just hope the audience enjoys the view of the of the entire story of the gods. And of course, the narrators will narrate each episode at a time. Chosen to be played by many actors like uh, Keith Sarabaiha, Tony Todd, Keith David, Ron Perlman, and many more. Wow, you got some perfect actors in there. They're some yes. of the best voices in the industry. Yes, that's why I'm listing them down. Yeah. To make sure they all... So that when the time comes, I will eventually make it look real and I will cast them into my show, <laughs> including you, my friend. I love it. I think that's wonderful. You've got yeah. a lot of passion behind this project. I hope it works out. Yes. And I hope that one day when I, whenever I'm finally getting to the HBO Max studios, only then will I finally get in touch with you on Facebook and through, or Instagram and to let you know that I actually performed it and that I want you in. That's great. Will you be sure to let me know? Oh, I will. That's why you, we became friends on Facebook. That's right. Along with other voice actors I get in touch with, such as Lex Lang, who I really want to interview him, and he should know that too. Yeah. Yeah, Lex, if you're watching, come on, let's have an interview. Yes. Sebastian wants to talk to you. Of course. He yeah. should know that. <laughs> Along with other voice actors such as Kari Walgren. Yeah, and Kari Walgren too. <laughs> Lex and Kari, come on. Yes, I was hoping you might say that. That is why <laughs> I always trust you like I've trusted many voice actors I've encountered for months. Sebastian, you've got such a great sounding voice yourself. I hope you wind up doing some voice acting soon it's a really good sound yes and actually i'm actually doing a voice voice demo video that i'm doing about my own voices i would do including the zeus voice that I, yeah that i wanted to practice most importantly other voices that i actually had in mind instead mm -hmm. of impersonating others you know sure so yes that's a simple fact i wanted to tell you especially when it comes to being good at these things since, of course, I've watched over the voice actors for months and I've studied them. I understand. I understand. Well, you should do quite well. Yeah. And you know, there is one show people recommend you being in. Hmm. And that, its name is DC Superhero Girls. Really? Yeah. Who could I play in that? Well, let's just say that's all up to the voice cast director, Gene uh, Felicio. That's well, I don't think I could probably sound like any of the superhero girls. No, I mean, I'm talking just about a superhero or villain. Oh, I see. Because all I know is that the show has Tara Strong, Ray DeLiso, Kari Walgren, Mayanna Velasco, Nicole Sullivan, and Kimberly Brooks. Woo! Wow, that's quite a cast. 
Yeah. And they're some all people, very, very accomplished actors. Yeah. So that's why some people recommend you being in it. And and there was one actor, some people on YouTube recommend me to tell the voice actors to. Mm. The, or should I say the voice cast directors to? You know which one? Tell me. Robin Atkin Downs. Oh yeah. Robin and I went to the same college. Whoa, really? Yeah, in, in Philadelphia. He and I went to the same college together. Wow. I yeah. did not know it until you told me. Uh, yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I like him. He's a good guy. Yeah. because Very funny and very creative. Yes. And you know, I've actually chosen him to be playing a character for DC Superhero Girls named Felix Faust, hmm. who in the comics is a evil sorcerer who's enemies of Zatanna, who was played by Kari Walgren. I wanted <laughs> them, those two to end up battling again, you know? Yes. This time as Felix Faust as Zatanna battle for DC Superhero Girls. You've got, so, a good, you've got good ideas for casting as well. Maybe you could be a, a new casting person. You could do the casting. Yes, that's what some people recommend me doing. Yes. Especially when it comes to having great ideas, of course. You do. You have many of them, <laughs> including you. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea, too. Yes, of course. That's something I've been working on. And um, there's a, the, the other question I want to tell you is what what do you ever pl play in video games or rather in other things? What it, characters what characters do I want to play? Yeah, what? What kind of characters would you like to play in the future, if you don't mind me? Well, no, I'm happy to tell you. You know, my children like to play video games, but they don't play any of the video games that I'm a voice in. They like to play, um, tell me if you, if you play any of these games. They like to play Metroid. That Metroid Dread is a new game that they really liked, and they've already finished it. They like all the Mario Brothers games, right? Yeah. And they like all the... Um, the Zelda games, right? Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So I would like to be in one of those games so that they get to play a game that has my voice in it. Yeah. Because right now they don't play any of the games that has my voice in it. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm glad you <laughs> said that. <laughs> this has been really fun. I'm so glad that we got a chance to talk. Yeah. Is there anything else I can answer for you before I have to get back into the booth and record? Yes. Before we go, this Zoom meeting is for the YouTube fans who've been trying to get in touch with you and also Kari Walker and others. So <laughs> if you don't mind telling them, if you please, how did they get in touch with you? Well, sure. Yeah. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I've got a, a few websites you can look at. You can always go to rickwasserman.com. That's sort of all about me. And then there's a website called bookablevo.com because I teach voiceover and I make voice demos for people. And then I also have a third website called tribooth.com, T-R-I-B-O-O-T-H, tribooth.com, which is a website for an invention I came up with, which is a, a voiceover booth that folds down like a tent and you can travel with it. So yeah. everywhere you go, you can have a voiceover booth. Yes. So if you're interested, you can always contact me through any of those websites. Hmm. Yes. And I'm so happy to finally meet you. And um, if you ever see the voice actors like Kari Walgren or others, tell them I, we had this conversation. I'll pass the word. I'll let them know. Thank this you. Was, this was a lot of fun, Sebastian. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best luck with your future and your projects with voiceover. Thank you. And I was hoping you might say that. <laughs> well, then, I guess I'll see you around, my friend, on All right, Facebook take care. and Instagram. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.